G'day everyone, my name's Cautious Pancake, and today I'm going to have a look at how to use the Humble Cactus to supplement your damage for a Day 7 Horde base. First thing we need to do is work out where on the cactus damage is done to players and zombies alike. Obviously walking straight into the side of a cactus like this does damage, but if we grab some blocks and jump up on top of the cactus, ideally damage would also happen when walking across the top. This would allow an elevated horde base to run around and across all of the tops of the cactus, across all of the tops of the cactuses, across all of the tops of the cacti, and result in damage being done to all of the zombies as they walk past, without any risk of them stopping and hitting and potentially destroying them during horde night. Unfortunately, as you can see here when we stand on top, no damage is done to the player, which is likely the same for the zombies. What this means is we will need to consider how to do damage to the zombies from the cactus at a lower level, which because we don't want them running around at ground level and potentially destroying them, we're going to need to dig a path underneath. This will allow us to make the zombies brush up against it or jump up into it, while at the same time controlling their pathing so that they don't run all over the place. As you can see here, we've got a fairly standard early horde base with a path across the top of a side centered pole, a basic cube base structure with an area to do melee damage from the front where the zombies will stack up and hopefully fall off if there's too many. They fall down here, all of our ground floor areas that are reachable by the zombies are reinforced with cobblestone and around the base we have several cacti surrounding the base that will allow us to use them to add a little bit of extra damage to the zombies. It's not going to make a huge difference overall but if you're playing on a harder difficulty and you need a little bit of a damage boost this might be for you. So what I've done here is dug a two block deep trench all the way around the base coming up next to the cactus as we go past them. As you can see, when we run past it as a player, we get hit by all of them and take a little bit of damage and then can pop out the trench at the other end and cycle back. This should give us a nice loop for the zombies, should spread them out a little bit and give us plenty of chance to keep our stamina up and melee the zombies as they come through. Switching to inside of the base, we just need to give it a little bit of a test. So let's summon in a bow and see how we go. Just need to make sure he gets knocked off and falls down into the trench so that we can test out the loop. Let's try that again. Okay, let's try somebody else. Okay, there goes Arlene down in the trench. We're using a feral version, so it should be a bit quicker. If we turn on God mode, you can see 155 health and she's taken no damage as she's run around. So despite the fact that we took damage at each cactus, it doesn't look like zombies will or at least the smaller ones like Arlene won't. So that's something that we need to fix. Okay, so to try and fix this, what we might do is try and push the zombies into the cactus as they run past. We don't want to push them up with any ramps because that might give them the height that they need to jump out of the trench. It's only two blocks high, so that's not going to take much. Instead, what we might use is a ramp mounted to the side that pushes them slowly into the cactus as they run past. Something like this. It certainly works on me. Oh, no way, I'm stuck. That's not big enough to get through. Let's use maybe the narrow version instead. Same idea. Mounted on the side wall, like so, and do it too high so that the zombies can't jump on top. That certainly seems to work. You can path from both directions. It shouldn't break any of the pathing rules. And let's do another one just over here for the second one, just to give us a second test. Can I sneak past without getting hit? I cannot. So that's looking pretty good. Let's jump back up inside and we'll give that another shot. Okay, Arlene's got two health left. Oh, and she's passed that first one okay. And the second one okay, all right. So despite that narrow ramp pushing us into the cactus, it doesn't seem to work for Arlene. So maybe we need a different placement or a thicker block, something. Hmm, let's just grab those. Oh, Arlene's coming back. Oh, Arlene's been killed maybe coming from the reverse direction makes a difference. And what we need to do is have the ramps round the other way. So if we put them this way, that will push the zombies over further to the right, right at the beginning where the cactus is. And that might be just what we need. Just, you get out of the way. 
Leave your foot behind, lovely. And put those blocks in like that, and let's see if that works. Still works for us, but that doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Okay, there we go. She's down in the trench. And straight past the first one with no damage. But hit the second one. Alright, that's good. We're 50% of the way there. Now we just need to work out what the difference is between the first and the second. And looking at it, I think it's a stupid by me mistake. Where the first ramps are a little bit further offset. As you can see, these are one behind the cactus. We need to move them over to there. And that should match this one. Let's also put these in for all of the others. Because I think that should pretty much have this solved. Okay, with all of those in place, let's get a feral bow just to check that this works for multiple zombie types. And we use a feral just to speed things up a little bit, hopefully, once he's down in the trench. Let's turn on God mode so we can see the damage. There's three damage there. I don't know quite what he's doing. A little bit of rage mode. And has hit the ramp, so we'll need to make sure they're protected. But damage is certainly being done at each of the cactus now. Each of the cacti. I'll get it right eventually. And there we go. A stupendous <laughs> amount of damage being done there. Maybe 10, maybe 15 damage. Not sure exactly what he started on. But as you can see, if they do that every time they loop around, when they come around and you get a hit on them with the club, that's going to make it just that little bit easier to kill all the zombies. Especially on insane difficulty, if you're playing that high, where the player damage is reduced significantly. Now one last addition that I thought I might add, since we're trying to do damage as the zombies run around, is to add in some of the campfires. I've only added in four, as you can see, as we make our way around the path. And hopefully, they will just cause a little bit of zombies every now and then to catch fire which will just add a little bit more damage to that being done to them without our involvement. It's not enough campfires to summon in a screamer or anything, particularly since we've got no gunfire happening on a day seven horde, or, or if you are lucky enough to have a weapon at this point, you're not gonna be doing a whole lot of shooting. So the heat generated from the campfires is probably not gonna be a problem. Okay, Hood Knight's underway, and here's our first zombies. Since it's a melee base, we can do a little bit of damage to the first group and anybody that comes in behind that we can't get to, they can't usually get to us and they'll run themselves off the pole down to the pit and then they should be following the path all the way around, taking some damage as they go so that next time they come around, they're a little bit weaker and we can hopefully get them with one or two shots. This is warrior difficulty, so not particularly challenging compared to, say, survivalist or insane, but still just that little bit harder. Work this up for some extra light in here. There we go. You can see the zombies a little better. And where are they? There they are. They're following the trench, which is great. They should be taking some damage. They're coming around. We should be able to kill them a little bit easier once they get here. You can see they're popping up out of the trench at the other end. No one's going crazy. Doesn't look like anyone's getting set on fire yet, which is a little bit disappointing. <laughs> uh, I know it's not a guaranteed chance when they run over the campfire, but kind of nice for someone, you know, bursting the flames. One guy just jumping up and down in the pit there. The rest of them are all looping around nicely. As you can see, once they've had a couple of hits and then had a few pokes full of holes from the cactus, they're a little bit easier to take care of when they come around. Now, I think that bow was having a little bit of a hit at the cactus then. Oh, and I just heard a loot bag, yes. So you can get loot bags from cactus killed zombies. That is confirmed. You won't get the XP from it, but at least you can still get the loot bag. That sounded like somebody else having a hit down here. Hopefully they're just hitting on the ramps that are in the trench, which I think is what's happening. That's why they've been upgraded to cobblestone, so that they can take a little bit of punishment from the Day 7 Horde. Oh, he was definitely... Yeah, there you go. There's a few zombies having a go. What are you doing that for? Get off. 
Oh, wait, I saw in the background there, that's where the new zombies are running in from. And I think the cactus is on the shortest path, so it's kind of blocking their run in. So that might be one thing that we could have improved is by putting some extra protection either around the side of the cactus so that the zombies can't do that. Don't want them hitting on that because that will destroy it. It will hopefully last the horde night, but may get destroyed early. Which, again, isn't the end of the world. This is not a permanent damage feature that we need for this base long term. It's just, just something to take advantage of for the early days. Maybe day 7, maybe day 14, but probably nowhere past there. Even day 14 is probably a stretch. By then you've got guns and hopefully a bit of ammo. You're not really going to be worrying about the three damage points that a cactus can do to a zombie at that point. Now let's just quickly turn on god mode and we can have a look and see Steve here is taking some damage. Gone from 24 to 21 down to 18 and comes out with 15. So for the normal zombies, the cactuses are still doing damage at three points a hit. Okay, it feels like it's quieting down. Only a few zombies left. I think maybe just the one. Is that all that's left? Yeah, one utility worker. And you can see it's still taking damage from the cactus. Looks like two damage each, so the armor reduction for zombies applies to cactus damage. There you go. Another little feature confirmed. Not a stat that I otherwise would have learned, but then. Yeah. The more you know. And since he's the last one left, we might just follow him around the trench. You can hear him taking damage each time he passed each cactus. And there we go. A loop bag to finish. So since we're down here, we might just have a quick look at how the base held up. A little bit of damage on these cobblestone blocks here. The main one in the middle, which we don't want to lose, is doing quite well. A little bit of wood damage, obviously a bit of damage there. We didn't repair anything during the Horde Night, so that's pretty much as it was. Taken half damage on that ramp. We've got a loot bag sitting on fire. Oh, and we can see the damage on the cactus. So we've lost half damage on that one. Half damage on that one, or just a bit under. And obviously you can't repair them. It's not like you can take the uh, fibers and, and patch it up. So once they're damaged and destroyed, that's it. So a little bit of damage all around, but pretty easy to repair, to be fair. It's worked pretty well. Now here's a modified version of the fire pits. I've just dug them down a little bit and added a small half step jump on it to try and make the zombies pause a little bit as they go over the campfire. Since none of them the last time caught fire, that was a bit disappointing. So this modified design should hopefully set a few zombies on fire. So I'll give it a quick test just to make sure that that's going to happen. Zombies are passing through as expected. No one's burning just yet, which is disappointing. I want more fire. Oh, we've got zombies on the inside and no stamina. Oh, I see fire in the distance. There you go. So we do definitely get some burning zombies on the back there. Anybody else? Ooh, yep. All right, so we now have flaming zombies contributing to it. Now that was achieved by digging a three wide extra trench, three blocks deep or one extra block deep in the trench, but a campfire in the middle and a half cube block on the far side, rotated to the bottom for the zombies to jump up onto. That way they can't jump out of the trench still, but they will slow off just that little bit extra so that they can have a bit more of a chance to get set on fire. So there you have it. If you find yourself doing a day seven horde base in the desert sometime soon, this is a way that you can use the power of nature to add some extra zombie damage to your base design. Is it worth the effort? Overall, I'd probably say not, but it's a bit of fun and the longer run back also helps to decrease the amount of damage the base took, as well as allowing a bit more time for stamina regen, which is critical at early levels. Whether you choose to use this or not in the future, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please give it a like if you did and consider subscribing to the channel to get informed of future videos. Thanks as always for watching and happy building.